Yes. <clears throat> there are a number of things that we're, we're going to go through and about the venues and the, the layout of your venue. Um, obviously, it's very important with your venue um, that you have a venue that's got facilities for um, people like ourselves who are disabled, either ground floor facilities or they've got full lift facilities, um, central parking location, um, and reasonable parking prices as well. That's very important. Um, access to public transport. That is another one that um, we need to look at. Virtual online meetings, some of you are struggling with it and some of you are, are being very successful with it. Fortunately, we've been very successful <clears throat> uh, with Zoom meeting. It's, it's very good um, that you're able to attract members from outside of your area. Uh, we've got people that are trying, uh, wouldn't be members as a face-to-face -face meeting because of the distance to travel. Um, but because we have virtually online meetings that we were able to attract the members that way. In fact, we started um, online meetings before the week before uh, the month before COVID struck. And my intention was with the online meetings is to run both the face to face and the online meeting together so that those people who are the regular group members, um, who are not feeling too well that particular day and don't feel like traveling, they can then log into the meeting from home with the comfort of their own home and be part of the group, which is all so much important. I know I refer to my group as the group, um, but everybody says, no, it's not a group, it's our family. And that makes such a difference. Um, in fact, that's, I had a lady ring me, a new member, and uh, she said, oh, I'm so pleased to be able to talk to somebody. It was Joe Rook who actually put this lady in touch with me. And she'd lost her son recently and her husband. And she was feeling very lonely and very much on her own. She had IPF. And uh, we were chatting for probably a good half hour, three quarters on the phone. And uh, she said, oh, it's just so lovely to be able to talk to somebody who understands who's got the condition and know how it affects you. Um, so I said, we can just ring me anytime. Uh, we have Zoom meetings. And I was mentioning about the, the, uh, the group calling it a family. I said, oh, well, that's nice. And we carried on chatting a little bit longer. And then when she came to the end of the phone call, she said, well, thank you ever so much for all the information you've given me. And she said, thank you for welcoming me to your family. And that was so touching. And I think that's the essence of inviting people to, to join us. Um, there are various different types of software available. There's Google Meet, which, which we tried, uh, which is quite complicated because it links to all the other different types of Google software. Um, Microsoft Teams in the bottom left hand corner. Uh, we did try another one, which is Click Meeting, which was quite expensive, but we managed to get a grant for it. But for some reason, we could only. Um, have five people on the screen at any one time. 
Um, I think we're paying £43 a month for that, so it's quite expensive. But it has a lot of other features that we found useful, but not if we couldn't see our members. So we cancelled that and we've, we've, we've come into Zooms and it's, it's worked extremely well. <clears throat> and the other thing with the group is that um, <clears throat> since we started doing Zoom meetings, they've asked, can we have a meeting in between our regular monthly meeting? Um, so we have one once a fortnight now, a meeting, <clears throat> one the actual meeting and the other one, which we call uh, a, a cuppa and chat. We just sit down, just chatting. She said, everybody's saying we've missed each other. It's, you know, we just enjoy talking to each other and discussing. With, with a Zoom meeting, you, you virtually strayed into it. Um, but with the uh, cuppa and chat that we, we run, people can then chat together and discuss things that they would normally do before and after a meeting. So again, that's important and it's, it's proved very, very successful. <clears throat> so we've covered visual online meetings and what they can offer. Um, it's also important to cover face-to-face -face versus online meetings and the presence. <clears throat> As I said, your, your venue for your meeting is very important. But not only that, it's also very important how you set your meeting out. Um, I think a lot of the groups that I've visited they've done the bottom right hand corner the theatre style group um, which is one I don't like simply because it appears to be them and us and anybody walking into that meeting from the back of the room they do, all they see is backs so they see that they're a little bit late that the meeting is caught on they're already scared or don't know whether they want to be at the meeting or not, but they've pushed themselves to go along and to sort of get that sort of reception, they sort of slide into one of the seats at the back until everything is over. So they've not seen anybody's face, or anybody smile, or anybody sort of give a nod to, to welcome them to the group, or even somebody stood up to go to the back because they've seen the person come in and have a quick word with them. So as I said, they tend to slip, slip into one of the seats at the back and at the end of the meeting, if they've not been not felt comfortable, then they're very quickly near the door to slip out before anybody in the meeting from the group has had a chance to, to speak with them and welcome them in, into the group. Um, <clears throat> we've got the coffee morning group in the top right. Um, again, that's a nice style, but it's a little bit too compact. Um, anybody coming in, they think, well, there's no spare chairs, where am I going, going to sit? So it's important that you have, if you have that sort of setup, then you have spare chairs in there that people can slide in and preferably have the chair nearest to the door so they don't have to walk around everybody and disturb the meeting and feel comfortable that way. Um, the top left-hand corner is bit of hiddle dip it'll do really it's it's very informal um somebody comes into a meeting like that where do i sit do i sit at the back or sit away from the group do i try and find myself a chair and join the group um again it's an unwelcoming situation and that's you know not what we want we want to make people as welcome as possible i know um one of our members, we, were, we did a local radio broadcast and one of the presenters turned to David and said, what's your thoughts on the group and what have you got out of it? And he said, well, quite honestly, he said, I was in two minds whether to go. He said, I saw this meeting and he thought, is it going to be everybody sitting around in corners with their oxygen bottles, feeling sorry for themselves and be an absolute miserable meeting? Um, he said, but believe you me, he said, it's completely the opposite. He said, so much information I've learned about the condition. Um, the people have been so supportive and helpful. And he said, 
it's given me life again because uh, I know myself included a lot of people tend to become recluses as a result of having IPF they're given that dreadful um, information uh, to meeting with the doctor and before they've had a chance to answer ask any questions about the condition they're, they're having to leave for the next patient to come in and by having that warm welcoming atmosphere then people can feel at home feel comfortable start to relax and then feel free to, to answer questions. Uh, the bottom left hand corner obviously is our group. Uh, that's how we, we sit. There's always plenty of room and anybody walking through the door, um, somebody will look up and be able to uh, nod or smile or sort of wave, come on in. Uh, you're more than welcome. And there's always chairs available uh, for people to to, to just drop in and everybody's curious so they look at the new person and they welcome them in either gesture or a smile or whatever and that is so important to make people feel welcome and it's also nice and relaxed it's a degree of formality um you know we are a group we want to sort of give um a preference professional sort of in loose terms appearance that we know we mean business but on the other hand we want to be relaxed so that people can come along and feel comfortable at those meetings so let's go into the pros and cons for the meeting room layout in terms of members perspective and comfort Experts say that between 70 and 93% of communication is body language. Nonverbal communication says such a lot. And I think we've all experienced this when we've been sending text messages to, to each other. And because we've not got the body language, the facial expression, You've been very easily misinterpreted and people have been offended rather than get the full understanding of what the person was trying to say to them. Positive eye contact helps build rapport between members and it keeps them engaged with the group. You know, just smiling eyes, looking up at somebody, particularly if they're not feeling too well when they turn up at that meeting, just to see a, a smile, those smiling guys, makes them feel warm and feel comfortable and think, I'm home, I'm back with the family. And that goes a long way to, to strengthen your group as well. <clears throat> the human face is extremely expressive, able to convey countless emotions without using a single word. And unlike some forms of Nonverbal communication, facial expressions are universal. The facial expression for happiness, the sadness, anger, surprise, fear, and disgust are all the same across all cultures. So your face says everything about you and to the person it's being conveyed to. It includes your posture and with your facial expression and your hand gestures. The ability to understand and interpret language can help you pick up on unspoken issues, problems or negative feelings that other people might have. We've all been to, to groups and seen members that we've, we've got to know over the time that uh, they've been members. And we, we suddenly get that instinct, that inner feeling that something's not quite right. So, you know, you, you, you smile and what, and as soon as you get the opportunity, you will go across to that person and say, are you all right? You know, you don't look yourself today, what's wrong? And by offering those kind words, it allows them to open up and say, well, such a thing's happened or I'm not feeling too well, or I've been back to the hospital and things are not too good. So it's, it's all important that we have all these, um, ways of expressing ourselves to others and allowing them to express themselves to us 
that is so important with something with a condition like this. Again, this is our meeting room, <clears throat> um, light and airy. Um, we meet at Bolton CVS, which is the uh, Community Voluntary Services. It's a centre that's set up for community groups. Uh, they have oh, countless groups that use the facilities there. Um, we became members, we applied to become, become members of the uh, CVS. And it's a wonderful organisation. The rooms themselves are light, airy. They usually have all the audio visual equipment. So if you want um, video projectors, whiteboards, um, the A4 paper um, pads that you can write down on. They have the internet, which is free to users. Uh, they provide the refreshments. Um, they have all sorts of people working there and they know every single uh, information on the funding that's available in your area and they will help you apply for that funding. Usually what they do is they will run a seminar, a free seminar for you to go along. Um, even now uh, with the COVID, they're running the seminars on Zoom and it's telling people what funding is available, how to go about it, how to write uh, a decent proposal for applying for funding. And they will give you all the little tips. And the person usually themselves who's running the seminar will make themselves available that, so that once you put your proposal together, you can take it into him or her and she will read through it and help you tweak it to make sure that you've, you've got everything just right. I know our very first grant um, we applied for uh, was uh, the Health and Wellbeing Initiative uh, in the Manchester area. And that was where the uh, government were looking for different facilities and services that could be offered outside of the hospital to be able to take the pressure off the hospital. <clears throat> and you could apply up to, um, I think it was £5,000 and we, 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 we collected everything we, uh, we could, sort of from uh, notepads, from the display stand that we've got at the back there, um, computers, uh, video cameras and so on for Zoom meetings. And we unfortunately we didn't get it on the first round, but when we applied again, we got it on the second round, and that was a major boost to to us that we we had money then to to do advertising, etc., and so on. <clears throat> One of the problems with people with pulmonary fibrosis and groups um, is that we're not well enough or strong enough to be able to go and stand outside supermarkets collecting or anything like that, organising jumble sales or bring them by or whatever you want to call them, is that we haven't got the energy or the strength. We've got the will and the determination, but unfortunately the body lets us down. But what we've got with CVS, they've got hundreds, literally hundreds of volunteers and they will help you put um, an advertisement together and they will then go through all their volunteers so that if you want somebody, if you want to run a website, somebody with website skills, somebody with computer skills and so on, they will have volunteers who are willing and, and queuing to, to volunteer to an organisation like ourselves. They will then find volunteers for you to work with your group who are able to do these um, actions that we, we're unable to do because of physical health. The staff are wonderful there. Uh, we go, I go in, I've got the big display stand, I've got my oxygen cylinder, I've got my case with all my notes and everything in, and I just park my car outside the front door, one of the staff comes running out and they just take everything off me and take it down to the meeting room and start setting it up for me. 
They're absolutely wonderful. Um, I've you now I've been through. Um, Joe has very kindly given me the areas which you all come from, and uh, so not everybody, but the majority of people, have been able to find um, the web address for the CVS um, in their area. So it's worth going along, having a chat with them. And uh, we pay twenty-five pounds a month for the room, uh, and that includes the refreshments. And because we are members, uh, we get all these facilities free and we get a reduced booking fee on the actual rooms. Uh, some of the courses, they offer things from first aid, um, safeguarding, etc., all just running all the time. And they will, some of those courses are actually free to members of the CVS. And so it's, it's, it's well worth investigating. Other places, venues um, for, for, for new people who are setting up is the local fire station. They usually have um, a room that they're more than willing to, to let out. And a lot of them give it them for free. A lot of the supermarkets, they have a room that they allow groups like ourselves to use. So there are a lot of places. And also the CVS will also give you information on that type of thing. So how do we get known in the community? Here's a few ideas for you. Uh, I think we've used virtually all of those with our group. Um, I'm fortunate that um, I, I had a training company in one of my areas was, was IT. Um, so I've been fortunate in, in to be able to use those skills to produce a website. Um, websites don't have to be complicated. Um, as I've said before to other members, if you're interested in the website, then come and talk to me. Um, I have the facilities where um, I, I, I work through a hosting company. It's not my company, but I have um, a server there that any of the uh, groups here are welcome to use to, to host their, their website. Um, it gives an awful lot of information and it's useful. And I'll talk about it a bit further along the, the line that um, how useful a website can be. Um, print, leaflets, etc. Uh, is very important. Local community radio, that's another very important one. Not commercial radio because you're not a big star that's going to bring them money into the radio station. They're not interested in small groups like ours. But if you get to a local community radio, they're very helpful. Um, we just need to ring up and say, we've got something to promote and said, right, come on in. And we'll go into the studio and we'll spend an hour. And it's not as daunting as, as you may think. Um, for example, when we've been into the studio, um, we've gone in, they've, they've obviously been playing a record or music and they've had a chance for us to sit down, settle down and then discuss what they're going to ask us next. And uh, so there's no sort of on the spot questioning. You get plenty of warning. And as they fade the music out, they come in and ask the question and you've had time to think of the answer before they do it. And then as soon as that question finishes, they go into something else, some other music or some uh, advertising promotion while you're off air again and they'll explain everything. They're very, very supportive and <clears throat> they they know the area and they, they can help you in, in many ways and they know what questions to ask to get the information out of you. <clears throat> all your um, Twitter and so on, WhatsApp are all useful ways, Facebook. Um, now I'm not a lover of Facebook, but on the other hand, 
uh, with Facebook, you can make it a private group so that people can only join your pet group if they're invited. So then you can notify all the other groups in, in your area of the South. And you can link them all together so you can see what each other's doing and help each other uh, and so on. As I said, local radio, we've used uh, Bolton FM. They've been very helpful to us. Um, it, they also have the facilities is if you can't get into the studio or you've uh, like, for example, Lorna joined us on our first radio broadcast. And so there to talk, talk to Lorna uh, via telephone, but it appeared as though she was in the studio. So they have all the facilities to make it as professional as possible. And you're able to invite people from outside the area, people from Action for Pulmonary Fibrosis have been more than willing to help with a, a radio broadcast to promote your, your group. So it's, it's a useful tool to, to consider. <clears throat> um, on the left is the front page of um, our website. On there, we have the, uh, along here, we have the various videos talking about um, pulmonary fibrosis, how it affects people, um, etc. And then we have, underneath that, we have the x-rays of normal lungs and people with early stage pul pulmonary fibrosis and later stage. And then <clears throat> through there, we've got, uh, pages on their way. All the um, uh, Lung Foundation, British Lung Foundation, we've got all their leaflets on the website in PDF format so people can go on there and they can download the information leaflets they have. The um, journals, the newsletter that Action for Pulmonary Fibrosis put out, I upload that onto there so that anybody who is new or thinking of joining the group they can download that information and see that we're part of a, a big organisation. We're not just one little tiny group on our own. <clears throat> we've got videos on there. We've got information um, about the, the oxygen supply company. Um, we've got videos of all the various procedures, CT scans, um, bronchoscopies, all the different um, your lung function tests and everything and giving a full explanation so people can see the information there, so they're not frightened before, before they go um, for the procedures, et cetera. Uh, there's so much you can put on a, on a website. And <clears throat> the beauty of a website is that the more external links, like you put a link on there to, to Action for Pulmonary Fibrosis, you put a link on there to um, British Lung Foundation uh, links, to various other organizations that find useful. Um, and by having all those links to your site, um, Google then picks all these links up and picks up information off your page as well as the, the other um, groups. And so it increases your visibility on the web. If I was to go uh, into Google now and I just typed Fibrosis Bolton, which I did last night. And I think the first two pages on the web was everything related to Bolton Pulmonary Fibrosis Support Group. So this is what they call um, search engine op optimization, SEO. And that is, you've got search engines going through all the net network and they collect everything that's, that's possible. So if, as soon as you put words in like bone fibrosis or uh, pulmonary fibrosis Bolton or something like that, it will pull all that information together into a couple of pages so you find it. <clears throat> and we found that extremely useful for getting information out. As I said, if anybody wants any help or information on setting up a website, then I'm more than happy to help them um, with that. One of the things we did for um, pulmonary fibrosis week 
was we went into the digital age and in the Bolton area, this new, brand new digital display sign uh, has been put up. And so we had, we had an ad put up on there for the full week, which gave them all the symptoms, et cetera, of pulmonary fibrosis, contact details for the group, et cetera. And that, that proved very useful. And it's, it's a very busy uh, traffic light junction. So people were stopped, so they had a chance to, to read it. Another useful thing that you can do, and you don't necessarily need a website for it, uh, but Google are, are, are very, very good in um, many different things to be able to help groups like ourselves. Um, I don't know whether you've been onto web pages, and on the left of the page, you've got all the list of different companies and so on. And then on the right of the page, you get um, a photograph and then information. <clears throat> well, the information you see on the bottom right is all information about our support group. It tells them where our website is, where we meet. Um, you can click on it and it will give you a map to where to find us. Um, there is an app that you can download to your either Apple phone or your Android phones and it's called My Business. Uh, when you click on that, if you come over to the bottom left-hand corner, it will then tell you how many people have actually logged into your website, um, what pages they looked at, and so on. And that just sits there. Any new announcements or any new um, facilities, like, for example, one of our members is a member of the uh, Nuffield uh, Fitness Centres. And he had a word with the manager there and he managed to strike us a deal that any member of our group, instead of taking full membership on, they could go for the full day for five pounds, use all the facilities, the gym equipment, um, the saunas, steam rooms, swimming pool, uh, cafe facilities, everything there. And you can make it today out. There's such lovely places to go to and visit, areas to sit and chat and socialise. So you can actually add these to this, uh, this little um, Google programme. So you, it will attract, again, more visitors because you've got, you can make it sort of a special offer you know what people like for special offers though they will they'll grab it if they can if it's beneficial to them so <clears throat> that's another useful one that we've found and it's surprising you can see um i think that is i can't remember it's the week or a month that 142 people visited um that page and then with your website, there are other programs that you can use to pull up the statistics of how many people have visited your website, etc. So you can see that there's an awful lot of people um, interesting to uh, to find out about pulmonary fibrosis or your group. The other thing that we have introduced is pulmonary rehab. Um, <clears throat> We've all been on pulmonary rehab courses and we do the eight weeks and they say this is how our group came together as a result of the pulmonary rehab course. Mm -hmm. um, and they expect us to go away having sort of feeling better after having done the course and all the exercises and learned all the different things from the consultants, the oxygen nurses, the physiotherapists and so on, is to go away and keep up regular exercises to keep our chest expanded, um, general health and well-being. Um, <clears throat> so my thought was, well, hand on heart, I'm one that did the course, felt the benefit of it, but I didn't keep up the exercises, simply because you're on your own and you don't. So my thought was if we could get an online uh, pulmonary rehab course going, and we do this once a week, 
and um, the senior physiotherapist at the hospital, um, he found uh, the gentleman at the top left hand corner, uh, Niall, who is the um, health and balance instructor for um, Edge UK. And they provide now, he needed to do an extra qualification, which we got funding for, for him to go on that. And we have a session with Niall, which is great fun, great laughter. I bet every one of you can tell me of somebody in the group who's the, uh, who's the joker and always has uh, um, something to say or a comment to come up with. And it, it, it is brilliant. Uh, and you can see in the, in the middle at the bottom there, that's our group doing the, uh, the exercises. And the beauty <coughs> of well is that uh, Age Concern have recorded quite a lot of these sessions with Niall and Laura. They do a Zumba, um, different sort of chair yoga and so on that are available on YouTube uh, that you can, you can watch. Um, we actually have downloaded quite a number of them to our website, so people don't have to go off. It, they can just click on it from our website and they can join in the exercises that way if they've missed a session or they can join in each Wednesday. And uh, it's real good fun and very useful. Now, we're talking about our Zoom meetings. Again, we've only done this um, via Zoom, but the intention is, again, once uh, COVID is over, we will have face-to-face uh, -face exercise classes, but they will also be linked with Zoom as well. So that those people who don't feel like coming out in, say, in the cold weather or anything like that, they can join in the classes from home as, ju as just being part of the group. And it's keeping that bond between everybody. And <clears throat> I know one, uh, when I was on my pulmonary rehab course, there was one day I woke up and I thought, I just do not feel up to going. I feel terrible. Uh, and I thought, no, you've committed yourself. You've got to make the effort. So I got myself up out of bed and got myself to the, the, the centre. And everybody who walked through the door said, Oh, I didn't feel like coming to this today. You know, I feel exhausted, I feel tired. I nearly turned over and went back to sleep. Um, talking with the, uh, the physiotherapists and the nursing staff, um, it was put down to the weather conditions. And <clears throat> we're all glad we turned up. And just, just being with each other, having the banter and the laughs, um, it really lifted the spirits. So it was well worth making the effort. <coughs> So again, with the monthly meetings and the pulmonary rehab, these I will be continuing for those people. Uh, if not feeling too well, then they can uh, stay at home and join the meeting or they can join in the pulmonary rehab uh, class and do, just do as much or as little as they want to, um, To, to join in, uh, <clears throat> and it, it, it is very useful. Hi, I'm Niall, I'm Strength and Balance Instructor at Bolton. Today we're going to take a group to Strength and Balance Exercises. Just give you an idea of, of what the sessions are like.
Sorry, Steve, I can't quite hear. It might just be me, but just to let you no, know. No, I, I, I've, I've not worked out what the problem is at my end to, uh, to get the sound to increase. I need to look at it at more. So if anybody Great knows... see the video. That's brilliant. I yeah. Can... We'll move on. <clears throat> Uh, promoting you, the group is very important. Um, you want to make yourself welcoming, but also you want to make yourself look professional. Um, don't forget that, that we're all um, spokes from Action for Pulmonary Fibrosis and that we represent not just our own group, but Action for Pulmonary Fibrosis as well. So it's very important, and it's something I always say, first impressions count. If you look professional and act professional, uh, then you will draw people to you. Um, <clears throat> for example, if you look there, we've got the, the full-size pull-up banner that um, we had made and designed. Um, the individual on the right hand side, you've got the front and the back of our uh, group promotional leaflet, which has got all the information about the group, what, where we meet, what time to meet, the website. Um, and on the back, it gives all the signs and symptoms of pulmonary fibrosis and all sorts. Um, I can let you have uh, a copy of that with pleasure so you can give some idea. But as you can see, the theme has run all the way through from the, the purple at the bottom of the banner and the same on the leaflet. So that if people get to know your branding, as soon as you see your logo and the, the colour, then it automatically attracts them and gets them to look more into it. Just um, a simple card that, that we have there. Um, handing out to GP surgeries and so on. That was the initial one that we did and then I moved on to the um, more professional looking one. Um, and these were by two companies, um, affordable leaflets and um, the vinyl banner printing companies. Now I looked at vinyl banners and one company wanted for one banner for design and everything was 180 pounds, which was extortionate. Um, I searched around and I found a company in Manchester and they will design, print and post your banner three for 75 pounds. I think it's 86 pounds now, actually. Uh, the price has gone up. I've got the latest prices, which I can say, again, I've got notes to send to you at the end of the meeting. <clears throat> And these companies will deliver all over the country. So if you want to use those because they're uh, affordable prices, then I know I went to Vistaprint for the, the cards in the center. And I think it was 45 pounds for 500. And the affordable print did the glossy double-sided um, leaflet I think it was £48 for 2000 So they're a, a very good company to, to deal with. And as I say, they do deliver all over the country, so you can contact them and get the best prices available, which is all important, you know, with groups that have got um, shorter funds. But again, a bit further on, we'll address on how to increase your funds and so on. <clears throat> But if you look at the, the bottom of the, the leaflet, it's not very clear, we'll, we'll come a bit further. As I've got all the different logos that we're allowed to use, um, <clears throat> which is the British Lung Foundation, APF. Uh, we've got permission from the hospital to the, use the NHS Trust. Uh, we've got the CVS local um, logo there. And we've also got um, Greater Manchester Health um logo on there because we got the grant from them and by having those on your information it gives you more credibility which is very important mm. um, to a group 
if they see that the health service are linked to it, well, if the health services have accepted it, then it, it's, it must be good or you know, it's worth looking into. <clears throat> now you're looking for ways for gaining more members. Um, on the far left there, we've got a, a pulmonary rehab class going on and at the end, the eight weeks, um, we get invited along to that meeting, the last meeting, and we can promote our group. So anybody who's new to pulmonary fibrosis and has done the exercises, they then realise that they can continue the pulmonary rehab online with us. Um, we can tell them all about the group. You know, you can go yourself or take a couple of members so that they can talk to the members and see what the benefits are, are of that. They will have facilities for you to do um, a short PowerPoint presentation of what you can offer them and so on. <clears throat> the other, again, is, is the, the big uh, full-length banner. Um, we have one of those banners. Again, it's got all the logos on the bottom again. Uh, we have those one in the chest clinic at Bolton Hospital, and that's permanently there. So anybody who comes into that reception area where that is, they get to see all the information. It's got the contact numbers to ring and speak to people. Uh, it's got the website, it's got Twitter, it's got everything on there. And again, it's eye-catching. Another thing that we've done is um, when John was still alive, we went along to the local hospital clinic and we set up our stand and the actual pulmonary fibrosis poster and we literally just sat there in the chest clinic. So if anybody came out who'd just been diagnosed with pulmonary fibrosis, they could come and sit and have a chat with us and we'd explain everything to them and try and sort of alleviate the fears and realise that it's a shock that they just have and put the mind at ease um, and then give them the information. Again, it's their choice whether they wish to take it up, but a lot of people do because they found somebody who understands, uh, knows how they're feeling, and obviously they want to not learn information that is correct and, and current for, um, for pulmonary fibrosis. Again, the leaflets that we've got there, we've handed, we have the set of those there, but we also handed, um, you know, a few hundred to the respiratory nurses and the consultants. And so if anybody's diagnosed, they're able to pass on one of our leaflets, which explains all about pulmonary fibrosis and where they can get help and support from. So that's another useful. So again, we've got the branding coming through. And so people walk in and say, oh, that's that uh, post I was telling you about. And it's, they recognize it straight away. Other ways of promoting your group, and again, I will give you uh, links and information. I mentioned the CVS. Another one, uh, which is in most areas, um, and that's the GP Federation. Now, the GP Federation, they are very, very helpful. They represent all the GP surgeries in your area. Um, it's not always called GP Federations. It's sometimes called different things, but I've again, of the members that have gone through, I've been able to find um, the GP or, or the GP Federation or the equivalent in their, in their area so that they can contact them. Uh, invite the person along the, uh, the manager there as a guest speaker. They will tell you what all the GP surgeries are doing and how they get communications and so on. But also because um, we got the GP Federation to come to us, we were able to get talking to them. This is the beauty of getting to speak. If you want uh, an organization to be, get involved with you or whatever, invite them along as a speaker. Because once you've got them sat at the side of you for two hours, you can bend their ear and you can sort <laughs> of say, I want, you know, can you do this for us? Oh, certainly, certainly, yeah, no problem. Let me have the information. And as a result, um, our group um, is now published in um, a booklet that has all the various 
um, organizations and helpful groups for patients. And we've been listed in that group and that booklet goes out to every GP surgery. So the GPs are aware that we're, 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 we're present in their area. Again, using your mobile phone, Twitter, YouTube, um, some of the um, videos that we've recorded, uh, not this one, but others, um, they will go up onto Twitter, particularly if you've had, say, a really interesting speaker, say, from the hospital who's into re the latest research. Uh, so long as you ask the permission of everybody, <clears throat> then they will allow you to put those up onto, onto your YouTube site. And it's surprising how many people do pick up on it, looking for pulmonary fibrosis. And so you get to know about your group, but you also get to know about the condition. Um, GP surgery is, is, it can be a, a difficult one for many reasons. Um, <clears throat> a lot of GP surgeries these days are in rented accommodation. They don't actually own the building. And they are very restricted as what they can actually do in that building particularly by putting anything on the walls. The, usually the owner will not allow you to put posters up or anything like that, apart from on the boards that are supplied. And there's usually three or four of the pin boards, but they're usually full uh, of information. And so it's unlikely that you will get your poster up there because you can't stick it to the wall. So again, speak to the respiratory nurses that, that, at, the hospital, at the doctor's surgery and get, give them a handful of leaflets. So if somebody's come through with pulmonary fibrosis, they can give them as well. The other useful thing uh, was, and again, I did that through the GP Federation, was the um, information card that uh, actually pulmonary fibrosis do for all the signs and symptoms of uh, pulmonary fibrosis and what to look for. Um, the GP, I sent those to the GP Federation and they emailed it to all the doctor's surgeries. So they got to know what all the signs and symptoms were. So that was useful ag again. Um, again, I've recently been in touch with the GP Federation um, because of the James Lind Alliance survey. Obviously, we want as many people um, involved in that surgery. It's in the survey. Um, it has a great impact on what can be achieved uh, through the drug companies, um, uh, research institutes, etc. So I sent that out to them to circulate to all the GP surgeries. And the other important thing, um, not many of you may know, but Action for Pulmonary Fibrosis have done an online e-learning module with the Royal College of General Practitioners. Um, so that is a seminar, online seminar for GPs um, with all the details of how to diagnose early stage uh, idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. So again, I have circulated the uh, email link for the, uh, the, the, the web link for that to the uh, general practitioners so that they can circulate it. Also, another useful tool, if you can find out if your uh, surgery is a GP training surgery and find out who the GP, who does the GP training. And if you give them all the information, then they can pass it on to all the students that are coming forward. And so that they're armed with the, uh, the information. So I dropped some uh, leaflets and posters, et cetera, at the uh, doctor's surgery. And I, was, I went in a few weeks later and there was no, no sign of any of the information that had passed on to them. And when I asked the practice manager, she said, oh, don't worry, she said, it's in hand. She said, we've got a meeting this afternoon. We have to run it past all the doctors in the surgery and they've all got to agree. If there's any objections, then obviously we can't do it. So it's just protocol that we take it through this uh, meeting that we have on a regular basis to cover any issues like that. <clears throat> um, another thing that we did 
again, it just came out of the blue. It was, I think it was about two o'clock one morning. I was searching through um, Google and I came across that Manchester Airport uh, was 70 years old. And to celebrate the 70th birthday, they were awarding oak trees to um, community groups, schools, uh, businesses, uh, colleges. And you had to, to apply for one of these trees and said, why are you applying for it? What significance would it have to your organization or group? Uh, and so on. And along with the uh, oak tree, they were offering a time capsule, uh, a sealed time capsule that you could put all information about your group or your organization, and that would be buried with the, with the oak tree. And so the top right hand corner, you'll see that we were successful in getting an oak tree. And that has been planted in the hospital grounds at the Royal Bolton Hospital. The uh, executives were delighted that we wished to, to place it there. And we had um, a stainless steel plate with the logo of the support group and the name of the support group uh, and, and, and embedded onto a, a granite plinth um, in front of the oak tree. And that will be there for, for years to come. Um, and in fact, the two members that died, uh, John and Ken, it was their request that their ashes be buried in front of the tree. And certainly mine will be going there as well as the, the three founder members. And along with, uh, if you look at, there's a bench at the bottom corner, that was, what was John's uh, contribution. He wanted a bench in his name. Um, but also as a member of the sport group. So anybody going there, that's another way, simple advertising of getting you known. Uh, the bottom hand, right hand corner is the, um, the day that we planted the oak tree. Um, Lorna and uh, Steen, one of the uh, trustees from Action Pulmonary of Hydrosis came along. Uh, the consultants, the nursing staff, um, the actual man, the CEO of uh, uh, CVS came along as well. It was a bitterly cold day, uh, but we, we, we planted the, uh, the tree in the cap time capsule. In the capsule, we put all the names of all the members of the, who were present there, um, all the information about how we were formed, um, We'd even, uh, I downloaded the radio broadcast that we'd done recorded from the radio stations on CD. They've gone in there. There's all information about the Nintendo Nib and Piferidone. Everything that was current at the time of that planting has gone into there. So sometime in the future, somebody will find it and hopefully it survived and they'll be able to look back and see what improvements and how far they've come when the idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis was a fatal disease, and now it's just like treating a cold. Let's hope, let's hope. Um, <clears throat> the picture in the centre is the outline of the, the uh, hospital. You've got the um, main outpatients department there, a big roundabout, and we're just to the side of the big roundabout where the dot is, and that is where our oak tree is planted. Um, the hospital were coming up for a quality care commission uh, inspection and uh, the ILD nurse um, who helped to set up the group, um, she rang me one day, she said, Steve, Steve, she said, thank you so much. She said, have you seen? I said, seen what? She said the Quality Care Commission have been along and the overall hospital departments have all got good, apart from the respiratory department that got an excellent. And the reason they got an excellent is because they had a support group and also the oak tree. So it, that was all over the newspapers as well. So that was more. So simple things, I, you know, I'll, I'll try and get a 
factory because I thought it passed the um, application date. And all that came from just, just one oak tree. Um, and it's lovely. <clears throat> Certificates, branding, logo, etc. If we look in the top card, the two uh, gold frame certificates. Uh, I don't know whether you've heard. Um, I can't remember the other one now. It's a, it's a, a British award for community services, voluntary community services. Um, you have to apply. Um, nominate somebody for it you can't apply for yourself it nominates somebody and you have to give four reasons why you've nominated them the evidence to prove what you're saying is correct um references from senior staff i think the, the senior nursing officer was one reference and and so on and british citizens award it is and Unfortunately, both Ken and John had died, but they'd done a tremendous amount for the group. They used to say to me, I've not done very much. You know, you seem to be doing a lot. I said, you don't realise just how much you have done. You've done so much. When you've been in hospital, you've never failed to allow the consultant to bring his, all his students. And you sat in bed there and he said to the students, right, there's the patient, there's his notes, there's the x-rays ask the questions and he was giving them the opportunity to see if they could diagnose pulmonary fibrosis and each time Ken and John went into hospital word got round all the nursing staff were coming around talking to them uh, in fact one day I got a phone call from John he said Steve he said you've got a presentation to do in three hours time and he got hospital consultants and nurses I had to go into the hospital and do a presentation on the support group. Um, and in fact, one of the pull-up banners is still on the ward, on the respiratory ward as well. So that was that was useful. Um, we were fortunate that we were able to get uh, certificates for both John and Ken for the excellent work they did for the community. Uh, the families were absolutely delighted. Um, normally with the award, you're, you're invited, if you get the award, you're invited down to the Palace of Westminster uh, for a meal and you are awarded a certificate, but also a medal as well. Uh, unfortunately, because it was posthumous, John and uh, Ken didn't get the medal. Moving on. <clears throat> Again, keeping in with the design, we've got our certificate of appreciation. That's another useful thing. Um, is that the nursing staff on the respiratory ward, they did um, a 5K run and raised, I think it was 280 something pounds for the group. Um, so I just did a certificate of appreciation to say, thank you for what you've done and how much they'd raised and it was appreciated. And that then I dropped it off at the hospital and it was immediately put up on the wall for everybody to see. And again, it's got all the information about the support group. So that's another way of getting yourself known. Very simple. And it's just a nice way of people who've, who've helped us just to say thank you. A gentleman turned up one day and he said, um, oh, I said, have you come to join us as a member? He said, no, he said, I've not come to join you as a member. He said, my wife had pulmonary fibrosis and she died a couple of weeks ago. Uh, I've come to give you a donation. And he just pulled 200 pounds out of his pocket and gave it to us. Um, so I did a certificate like this, which I sent to him as appreciation of the way he supported the group. And they were very, very thankful. Logos and things like this is, is, is very simple. It is eye catching. But if you look at the our logo with the hands and the lungs, all I did was go on to Google and I found a, a logo of the hands at the bottom left, and then um, a tree in the shape of lungs. And I just 
reduced them to size, changed the colors and brought them together. And that was our logo. And it's very simple. You can do all these types of things yourself. Um, another useful thing is that when you're sending emails out, if you've got a logo and you've got your um, different uh, logos that you could put across the bottom of the page, then you can set your um, Microsoft Word. So it will put automatically, as soon as you click on a new page, it will put this branding onto your page and you just type your letter. And it looks so much more professional, more eye-catching. And it, again, it gives you that credibility because you've got the logos at the bottom to uh, sort of enhance that you're a serious group. You know, you're there for a cause, etc. Um, as I said, the CVS will be a, a very useful. Um, they help us get the Greater Manchester Health and Social Care Partnership funding. Um, again, through CVS, we had there was a seminar on how to obtain a lottery grant, which uh, it was only a couple of hours of seminar, and the lady who was presenting the seminar was basically asking us to apply for a grant. Um, people have got the impression, and it probably was many years ago, loads and loads of forms to fill in and different criteria to meet, etc. That is not the case anymore. Um, it's all done online. There is a form online, but it's very simple. It just needs you to explain what your organisation is about, what your organisation does, what you want the funding for, and a list and costings of the funding, and all done online, sent off, and within 12 weeks, you'll get a reply to say whether you've been successful or not. <clears throat> um, again, the CVS, it's £45 a year to become a member. Oh no, £45 full stop, it's not yearly, it's one-off membership, but you've got so much information at your fingertips there and so many willing people to, to help you. Um, the CVS and also the GP Federation, you can see that the, they're all over the place. Um, on the CVS, each, each week you will get a list of new courses that are coming up or meetings that you might be interested in and so on. So by all means, uh, do that. Those are the ones I've been able to find. But again, if you look, I'm sure that there will be um, ones in the area. So I've, I've, I've made a list of, of all those uh, groups and the telephone numbers and email addresses, etc., so that you you can you can contact them straight away. There's all sorts of different types of uh, information available. GP federations, they've got so much to offer. Your local CCG, if you contact them, they will send a representative along to, uh, to give you a talk and they are very helpful. It's just getting in there. As I said, we were very successful with our lottery funding. Um, there, if you go for a grant for under £10,000, you have a seven in 10 chance of getting a grant. So it's, it's, it's very good odds. And it's not just a one-off. You can apply every year for a grant. Uh, there's one group there, I think it's for um, uh, abused wives and women. And they've applied three years on the trot and three years on the trot, they've got the funding. If it's a well worth cause, then you'll have no problem getting that. So it's simple to apply for. Online questionnaire. Applications for 10, 000, over £10,000 give three in 10 chance of being successful. And applications for 10000 seven in chance successful. And you can have repeat applications. And I think I'll shut up there because uh, time is moving on. So if you have any questions at all, just fire them away.
I was interested in your comment on uh, GP surgeries. Yeah. Uh, I, one thing not connected to with our group, but I thought it was quite a useful thing to do. You mentioned uh, some GP surgeries have training sessions yes. with doctors and so forth. Uh, I volunteered to let them, to my GP, to let them listen for the students to listen to my chest. Excellent. Oh, my it, husband also, because, every time. Yeah, well, the, other, the thing oh. is that the condition is so rare uh, that a typical GP surgery may only come across sort of two or three patients on their books with with PF, and uh, it's quite good to to get particularly new doctors to to listen to what a crackly uh, fibrotic uh, set of lungs sound like. And there are various 